about 24 to 5 on 2 double C Canberra Live until 6 o'clock. And in this half hour, it's time to welcome to the studio once again from Envision Financial, Luke Smith. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I know we've got a lot to talk about today, but before we do that, just very quickly, the share market today, what a stunning turnaround wow. in the last 30 minutes. The only thing I can think of is the press conference by the Prime Minister wrapped up and everybody said, oh, good, they got a plan. It's all going to be... <laughs> it's, all... Mate, it's it's like a Pat Rafa comeback from the mid-2000s. <laughs> it was sensational. Three sets, you know, two sets down and wins three and two and 15, yep. 13 in the last. So, yeah, yep. it's, it's, it's just hysteria and I think people need to keep in mind that emotion drives a lot of people's decision-making and... Sometimes you need to just step out of that bubble and, and, and come back to some fundamentals. And of course, as we've said before, if you look carefully at the uh, various uh, available companies on the share market, the ones that were good companies last week are still good companies this week. If you're making a decision based on the quality of the company, then the day-to-day -day share price isn't really that big a deal. No, look, and, and we've been having this discussion with clients, and I must admit I'm very, very impressed with my client base because we've not only had some questions, but we've had very informed and intelligent questions, which means people actually listen to something I say, which is, yes. is, is, is quite comforting. Well, that's nice. Um, and of course, this is all relevant too, if uh, you're interested in our, to our topic of today, which is mm. how to set up a self-managed super fund. Now, we talked about self-managed super funds a few weeks ago, yeah. and apparently you've had a huge response to that. So we're going to look at it in more yeah. detail. Yeah, that's right. So I thought what we'd do is we'd have a four-part series about you know setting up the fund, the mechanics of the fund, the benefits of the fund, um, and, and the key things that you as the trustee can consider because it is very topical and there's obviously people always moving towards retirement age and, and we're gonna cover off today what we do to set it up. And then in the next three episodes, we're going to delve into other areas of the fund and, and make sure that people have a, a good understanding other than I want one because my mates have one. Well, I think last time we talked about who is it appropriate for and why would you and why would you not? Yep. So today we're going to go straight to the guts of it. Where do you start? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, you've, you've, you've decided to, to open a fund and it's for you and, and everybody at work is excited because now you're like everyone else at work. <laughs> um, so what I've, what I've sort of broken down here is to say, okay, we're going to do it. Now, how do we do it? So obviously you need to think about why. Obviously that's, if you're going to jump down this road and say, okay, I'm going to do this. What do I need to think about? Why are you doing it? Is it cost? Is it control? Is it investment options? Are you buying a commercial property? Do you want to buy some non-standard assets? Do you want to put some pink diamonds or some wine in your super fund? Antique cars. These things are all sort of possible. They're outside of the norm because the vast majority of underlying self-managed super fund assets are property or standard assets. So I can set up a self-managed super fund and uh, sell my Holden Calais to the super fund. Well, <laughs> you can't sell your Calais to the super fund, but your super fund could buy a Calais from someone else. Um, so if once we've, we've got to the point of saying, well, that's what we're gonna do, we need to then think about who's gonna be the trustee. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two key options here. You can have a corporate trustee, where a company is the trustee of the super fund. Right. Or you can have joint trustees. So you and I could be the, the trustee of a fund, where we're both members, yeah. we're both trustees. So two different ways of operating the funds, and it comes with pros and cons. Could you appoint a professional to be your trustee? Uh, you could, well, no. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. You could appoint somebody to assist you with the management of that structure, right. but you are still the legal representative of that entity. Good. It could be you and I as joint, and yeah. I say joint because you can't have a single member fund with a single member trustee. Right. Now that's where a corporate trustee comes in to say, ABC Proprietary Limited, of which I am the sole director, can be the trustee of my fund with only me in it. Right. Okay, so a point of distinction there, who's going to control it and what does your situation require? Joint names or you could have more than two people or you could have a company with directors of that company being in the fund. It's Positive and negative on both sides. Okay. If somebody passes, it's very difficult. Well, there's a lot of administration to change all of the registered holdings. Mm. If two directors of a company and one passes, nothing needs to change in relation to the admin of the fund from a registration standpoint. And those out there that do this sort of work would understand there's a huge undertaking to fix that yeah. um, in a horrible time in somebody's life. So generally, I, I say use a corporate trustee for simplicity and also from a longevity standpoint 
because it will stand you in very good stead going forward. When I hear the phrase self-managed super fund, I just imagine one individual who has decided to take command of his or her destiny by mm -hmm. setting up this fund for that individual. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're telling me though that you can't just have one individual doing his own thing uh, all by himself and be his own trustee or, or you can, or how does that work? So you can have one person in the fund, yep. but one person cannot be the trustee of the fund. Right. In that scenario, you could have ABC Proprietary Limited be the trustee. Right. And a sole director. Right. So, there's so I'm still the sole director. Correct. So it's, it's still just me. Exactly. <laughs> it's just the, the, the way the law works in right. relation to control of a trust structure. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to have an element of trust when everything's the same. And if I was setting up a super fund that's going to encompass both me and my partner, yep. then we can do it that way and we can both yep. be trustees. Exactly. And that's where I say, generally, if you take your mum and dad or your, your, you know, your, your couple arrangement, you have two members, two trustees, and you're both in that fund. Yeah. Now, where you may, someone may have previously somebody, you could then have ABC Proprietary Limited and you'd be the sole director of that company and achieve something for just you going forwards. Okay. So that's why I point out it's different depending on your situation because it's not going to fit for everybody's personal situation at any one time. Okay. Um, how easy is it to set all that up and does it cost much to set it all up? Uh, yeah, well, again, it depends. So, you know, we've we've decided we're going to do it. We've decided who's going to be the trustee. Then we need to pick a name. All oh, right. Yes. Okay. Now, companies are registered with ASIC. So obviously you may or may not be able to have the name that you want so if it's already registered in your area. Black Widow Retirement Fund. Yep, that's fine. I got half. <laughs> I took his super, super fund. I'm still emotional, so you can call it whatever you want. Um, super, self managed super fund names are not registered. Mm -hmm. So you could have the same name in different states, and that's okay. Right. The corporate trustee, obviously, is, is done through ASIC, so it's, in, it's an incorporated company. Yeah. You need to check and make sure the names are available. All of that is generally done by a solicitor. Yes. Because the next thing we need to move on to then is the deed. Right. And the deed is like the rule book. Yes. And it says a self managed super fund is a product, just like any other sort of super fund. So the self managed super fund has what we call a product disclosure statement. And in that in that deed it sets out all the rules, all the cans and the can'ts in relation to how the fund can operate. And the deed is really the backbone of the, the structure itself. So, so it's a bit like the constitution of a company or even the constitution yeah. of a country. Correct. Very, very similar. It says who's involved, what are we going to do, how are we going to do it, and what are the tools we can use to get what we need to yeah. get done done. So that's very important for people that have a structure already because legislation can change, pension options can change, and if you don't update your deed, you yeah. may say, oh, well, I can take out a transition to retirement pension, for example, but what does the deed say? Right. Is there a standard form of deed that uh, it's like a cut and paste, anybody can use it kind of thing, or do you really need to specifically tailor one for your needs? Again, it comes down to your personal situation. Yeah. In, in most instances, you can go to a solicitor to get a generic deed that will cover 99.5% of the legislative rules or legislative requirements of that structure. If you have some fairly complicated estate planning issues or some other out-of-the-box intergenerational issues or blended families, or you know, some obscure um, third party companies, making sure the deed can be tailored, which it can, to your personal situation to take into account future issues is also, again, very, very important. And getting some advice in relation to drawing those up is, is, is a good idea. Cost-wise, um, anything from 1,500 to $4,000. Okay. Yeah, like most things. So it's comparable depends. to setting up a company structure. Well, a company uh, off the, the 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 raw off the floor costs, um, you're looking at about thirteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. It's about three hundred and fifty dollars to get a deed drawn up. Um, so three hundred to five hundred for the deed, and I think it costs about a thousand bucks to register a company in Australia. Yeah. So I think it's pretty pretty standard. Yeah. Okay. So once we've done this, uh, mm -hmm. then of course it's a super fund. You have to start making contributions. You have to. What do you have to do to keep it running? Correct. Right. So <laughs> yeah. exactly. The the last thing we need to think about when we bring the fund to life is obviously new binding death nominations. Okay. So it's a new fund, and you're going to roll your superannuation in. And what you would like to have in that fund is to say, well, in the unlikely event of my death, where would I like this money to go? So a binding death nomination needs to be created okay. when you bring the fund to life and you say, okay, in the unlikely event of my death, I'd like my money to go to X. Okay, so you complete a new binding death nomination. 
just like you would if you went into an industry fund, a personal super fund, or any other super fund that you hold your retirement assets in. So they're the, they're the key things. Once we've got the deed and we have a structure that we can now sort of use going forwards, yeah. some of the other things we need to get obviously are a tax file number. Right. We need to get an ABN. And generally speaking, you'll need those two things to then be able to facilitate the rollover. Yes. Because on the rollover paperwork that you will send to your existing fund, they will ask those sorts of questions so that they can identify that it is an incorporated entity. Right. And the ATO keeps it registered of that on their website. And most super funds will want to know that it is a complying fund, which means that it's been set up under the rules. So this rollover is basically taking your existing super that you've accumulated over the last 10, 20 years, whatever it might be, and then shifting all of that into your new structure. Correct, that's exactly right. Now to do that, we need a bank account. So oh, well, of course you do. <laughs> we've got a tax file number, we've got an ABN, um, we've got the ID of the members, and then we've opened a bank account. Okay. Because obviously we need to tell the fund where are we going to transfer that money. And now with the electronic settlement system, it's, it's very, very efficient. It hasn't reached... SMSF land yet, but retail superannuation funds now can be rolled over in three to four days. Um, some funds, depending on where it's leaving, will still provide a check. Others will provide the rollover statement, which gives you a summary of your tax components, which is very, very important. And that is something that members need to keep because it illustrates the tax profile of your accumulated super and it carries it forward into your new structure. And once you've done all of this, I assume that 9.5% of your income has to be going into it. Potentially. Potentially? Potentially. Or I assume you can <laughs> add, you can put in more if you want, but you have to at least put in 9.5%, wouldn't you? Well, you have to receive 9.5% from your employer, right. depending on who you work for. You may or may not be able to use it. So PSS, CSS, DFRDB, MSBS, obviously if you're in a defined benefit scheme, this is where you could put salary sacrifice payments yeah. or personal deductible contributions because you can't direct money in that form to those existing funds. So you can roll over your accumulated benefits where you can gain access to your accumulated super. Again, defined benefit schemes are an exception to the rule here because they can't be rolled over. Um, but you've got a bank account. You then need to think about the investment strategy. So this is a legal requirement and this again is the goalposts on the pitch. And what it says to the trustees and the members is, this is how we're going to invest the money. These are the rules in relation to the investment parameters that the members are happy to play with. And that could be your asset allocation, your risk profile, am I running 50-50, am I running 60-40, 70-30 growth? And it it's, talks about liquidity, it talks about the insurance needs of the members, and is a bit of a guideline in relation to what the trustees need to keep in mind for the benefit of the members. Well, we'll take, uh Sorry, I didn't say that right there, but we'll pick this up, that's better, uh, when we come back right after the break. It's about 11 to 5 on 2 C. C Canberra live until six o'clock and in the studio with me at the moment, Luke Smith from Envision Financial. We're going through the details of how you go about setting up your own self-managed super fund. Yep. We've talked about the basics of getting it started mm -hmm. and we've talked about rolling over your existing super into your own new fund. Yep. And we've talked a little bit about uh, how you manage your, your investment choices. Yep. Now, uh, where do we go from, from there? What else do we need yep. to know? So we've got the investment strategy that lays out the rules of the fund. That's obviously very important because as the trustee, you could also be the member. And it's important that people keep in mind that you wear two hats. Yes. You are the member. And just by sheer coincidence, you may actually be the trustee. Mm -hmm. So as silly as it sounds, when Luke goes to retire, Luke writes a letter to the trustees mm -hmm. and says, hey, Luke, mm -hmm. is it all right if Luke has a pension? Right. Which is pretty stupid. Yes. But unfortunately, that's just the... The, the, the legal system that we have to you know play within. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important that if you're going to run your fund, you have an obligation as the trustee first yes. to act in the best interest of the members. The fact that they end up being the same person in a lot of instances is just a sheer coincidence. So we've got our investment strategy. We now need to open a trading account because yep. we need to be able to buy and sell some shares if that's what we want to do. So once we have the, the, the TFN and the ABN and we've got the complying super fund in place, 
we've got the money in and we now want to go out and buy CBA and NAB and Westpac and all these things because they've got absolutely pummeled. We oh need, yeah, they're cheap right now. Yes, <laughs> we, need a, we need a trading account which needs to be open because obviously the super fund owns the money, the super yes. fund owns the shares. Um, and then once we've done that for the majority of the financial year, we then need to engage an accountant. Okay, and this is really important because not all accountants are accountants. It's like all Brandy's gin, or like all, all Cognac's Brandy and all Brandy's Cognac. No, it's not. <laughs> so, not well, all accountants do this, right? Not all accountants are accountants. Oh, that's got me baffled well, now. All accountants are accountants. But they're Some not accountants necessarily... may not specialise mm. in this area. So, there we go. you need to have a think about whether your existing accountant can do it. And a lot of good accountants do. You can also go straight to an accounting wholesaler for self-managed super funds. Now, some accountants out there will actually use the wholesaler, get the work done, put a margin on it, and then give you the bill. So oh, right. if you're looking to do this yourself... That's a nice, neat way to make a dollar, isn't correct. it? Correct. <laughs> if you're looking to do this yourself and have this fund run, see if you can find an appropriate wholesaler or an accountant that will work on a fixed fee basis. Right. A lot of agreements now are getting done on the number of assets in a fund, not the market value of a fund. So going back a number of years, it was, oh, I've got a huge super fund, I get a huge accounting bill. Now it's generally a, a fixed price arrangement mm -hmm. uh, that's worked out on the complexity of the underlying assets, not yes. its value. So most self-managed super fund accounts that we look after would be paying fees of anywhere between sort of two, five and three. Okay. Again, depends on the complexity. So it's hard to say that this is a price because it's it's not that clear cut. But you know, if you're paying more than three, three and a bit, you'd you'd be shopping it around. All right, so now we've got our trading account, we've got our accountant lined up, we're basically yep. ready to get into business, aren't we? So we're, we are. we've just about reached the end of today's installment. We have. Uh, but uh, of course, just a quick recap, uh, yep. why would you do this? Potentially greater control over what you do? Yep. More investment options to yep. choose from? Correct. Including exactly. some non-traditional assets like your you exactly. know, interest That's... in old collectible cars? Yep. Wine, paintings. Now, you just I just preface this by saying, there are very, very strict rules in relation to how you record those sorts of assets. Yes. So your collectible rules are very, very strict. Um, don't have a painting owned by your super fund hanging in the kitchen. <laughs> okay? That's got to be in a bank vault. Exactly right. All right. But that's that's exactly where people try and just get that out of control and some other structural benefits like paying pensions with super contributions and having multiple pension and accumulation accounts in one place to have investment flexibility and control. Fantastic, and uh, we'll uh, explore more of the intricacies of uh, running your own self-managed super fund when yep. we continue this discussion next week. But in the meantime, Luke, where do people yep. go for more information? Well, again, if, if people want to investigate the self-managed super fund realm, it's uh, www.envisionfinancial.com.au, and they can go to the Knowledge Centre there. Um, they can subscribe to that, it's free. And there's a whole library of technical information in there. Or you can come in, sit down, have a chat and say, hey, this is what I've got, is it appropriate? Obviously super investments and the underlying holdings that you have are very topical at the moment. If you're concerned about your asset allocation, you're concerned about your overall risk profile, come in and have a cup of tea and see if we can't point you in the right direction. Obviously, we've got the podcast, the strategy stack of Luke Talks Money on iTunes, and um, obviously in Vision Financial Canberra on YouTube where we've got the educational material there from Michelle. So, nice to meet you. Thanks very much. We'll catch you again next week. That's Beautiful. Luke Smith from Envision Financial. Thanks, mate.